Hey guys, what's going on today? This is Andre Bias with Quality Lawn Care Cares. And today I want to give you guys some tips on getting your grass green. So stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit about the tips you need to get this lawn green. So some of my Bermuda's actually coming in. I killed a lot of those dandelions. I still got a lot of cats in here, as you can see. Um, here, but the Bermuda is slowly coming in. Just wanted to show a quick video of what it looks like when. So this is what it looks like when most of the weeds are done. Some other things I gotta do to it, but this is what it looks like when you haven't killed weeds. So there's a definitive line right here. Look at those weeds. 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 So there's a major difference once you get rid of. Uh, those some of those weeds. I explained a little bit in the video about. Hey, what's up, people? So I want to talk uh, about um, tips to get your lawn uh, flush. It's, it's a lot of steps that you got to do to it. It's it's almost like a uh, taking care of a sick patient and trying to get them back to health. I know it's kind of uh, cliche with everything that's going on right now, but since we're all in house and we have nothing going on, I figure some people want to go out there and get their yards looking nice. So the first step uh, you want to do. Uh, it's kind of too late for it now, but what you want to do is you want to put out your pre-emergence. I've talked about this uh, a lot, but it is very important. Pre-emergence stops the germination process. Weeds start germinating at 55 degrees. Normal grass down in the south, here in Georgia, your centipede, your Bermuda, start germinating at 65 degrees. And what I mean by germinating is they start reproducing themselves at 55 degrees soil temperature. So the weeds are germinating before the grass is, and most times they choke out the grass. So what the pre-emergence does is it actually interrupts the reproduction process and stops them from happening. Once you put a barrier out, you get a barrier, you want to put it out about, in Georgia, I say around about February, uh, mid-February, early to mid-February, get it out because it takes a little bit longer to do it. Um, I like to give homeowners some tips. So the best product for homeowners, cost-effective, would be a 007. Home Depot sells what they call the Lesco. It's Lesco brand. It's a pre-emergence crabgrass preventer is what it says. But it'd be a 007. That's the brand that I know. It might be some other brands uh, in the big box store. Uh, the main ingredient that I really use for mine because I'm commercial is Prodiamine. Um, you can get it online if you want to spend that kind of money and, and purchase it. But it's a good product. But our pre-emergence is the first thing. You must apply that early winter. Well, not early winter, but let's say early spring or late winter. And you want to put it out early fall after September 15th because you have fall weeds also that start germinating when it actually gets cold. So you have those. So once you have a, a actual weed pre-emergence barrier in there, you want to put out a post-emergent herbicide. And I'm going into detail of this on different videos. So it's a post-emergent post emergent herbicide and it's going to be a selective herbicide and you want to get one you want to get both if you can systemic i'm going to go into detail systemic which i talked about in another video uh and a broadly if you want to mix them together <clears throat> not a broadly but a topical so what i mean a post emergent herbicide is that when you go in the store and um i have a bottle here is you want to have uh this right here is product that i use for homeowners it's older. This is Bayer Advanced, but you can get one called uh, Bio Advanced or whatever. You'll see on here, that it actually has a pre-emergent built in it. In it. But um, this is a systemic. It'll kill down to the root system. It'll kill dandelions. Uh, it'll kill a good majority of broadleaf weeds. So this is what I want to talk about a little bit about this video. One particular brand is not going to kill all your weeds in the yard. There are so many different types of weeds, and there's a chemical reaction that these products use to kill the weeds. So if you notice on here, it says it kills broadleaf weeds. I mean, it's going to kill dandelions. It's going to kill chickweed. It's going to kill cat seed. It's going to kill all the broadleaf weeds. Probably going to have to look at identification charts to, to see exactly what the weeds are. But you have so many other weeds in your yard that this will not kill. You have nuts edge. You have a different type of sages. You have different type of crabgrass. You have so many different type of, uh, per, uh, you got perennials. You got uh, poana. You got annual bluegrass. You have uh, prince, uh, I can't pronounce the name right, but then you might have a, a fescue in your Bermuda lawn or your centipede lawn you want to kill. So you have to have a different selective post-emergent herbicide to kill those. And I would recommend to my homeowners is go ahead, when you go in the store, there's different products that'll kill all those different types. 
that I talked about in the previous video, make a concoction. Follow the, di follow the directions on there. Get you a broad leaf, and then you want to go and get one. So another product that I use for people that it kills nuts edge, and it kills, um, I believe it kills nuts edge, and it kills different sages, and um, some other different type of weeds, is a product in Home Depot called Image. I don't have one here because I use the, uh, I have the actual uh, commercial brand, but Image is in the stores, like 19 bucks. It'll cover, I believe, about eight to eight thousand to nine thousand square feet. Also, people, when you get these bottles, they have these spraying bottles. They only going to cover what they say. If it says it's five thousand square feet, that's all it's going to cover. It is not going to cover your front and backyard, even though you're trying to squeeze it out. So you want to measure your area the best you, best you can. Walk it out if you need to. Walk the length, walk the width, multiply it, get your square feet. So if it says it's only going to cover eight thousand square feet, that's all it's going to cover. So, but what I would advise is getting you a pump sprayer or a uh, hose in sprayer and mix these two. Image is one, it kills, uh, like I said, nuts edge and some other uh, non broadleaf weeds, and mix it with some bio advance, and you'll kill a great majority of your weeds uh, in the lawn. It'll kill a, a good amount of those weeds. But just just uh, just show a quick video of all I did was kill the broadleaf and my weeds in the clip you just saw. So I still got a couple of sages and I still have a couple of uh, nut sage and some different ones that I'm going to um, attack here um, this week. Um, and you'll start seeing your grass come in. So uh, the next one, I think a lot of people don't really talk about uh, this. I think that I see or you really have to go in depth is your pH balance in your lawn. Your lawn has a pH balance, which means it's acidic or alkaline. You probably heard that a little bit about our bodies, whether or not our bodies is pH or alkaline itself. So your bot, your lawn, the muter specifically, and some of the other one where the grass likes a level of about six or seven, really like five and a half, six of uh, alkaline. A lot of times when you don't put no lime out, and it takes a lot of lime and it takes time to get your pH balance correct in your yard. But what happens is if your pH balance is low, it will not absorb the nutrients that it, it won't absorb the nutrients that you put in it. So if you're putting all this doggone uh, fertilizer out and you put all these other products on your yard, the Scots and all the stuff you see in the stores, if your pH balance is not right, the soil is not observing it, absorbing it. What the lime does is it breaks down the micronutrients in it, helps loosen that soil up, and the nutrients will actually eat or feed off what you're putting on it. But if the pH balance is not right, if it's too low, actually if it's really acidic, you'll have a lot of weeds in it. So your lime application comes into play. Uh, typically you wanna put lime down like in the fall. Home Depot has, they sell like a fast acting lime product that I'm supposed to, I don't know exactly how it works. It's just reading off reviews and what I've seen, but if you apply it, it's supposed to be fast acting. It's supposed to make results uh, pretty quick. So do your own research on that one there. I'm just putting it out there for my homeowners. Uh, who actually want to, you know, start the process on that, process on that. So the next process, um, which is not quite yet, uh, I will go out and wait till about maybe the end of April, beginning of May, when it gets a little warmer, is to aerate. I've talked about, I don't think I've talked about it much, but I talked about it a little bit. And that's the machine where you want to get it as a core aerator. It's a uh, machine with spikes or cores on it, and it takes out plugs in the yard. What happens is your grass becomes compact with all the leaves and all the thatch and all the layers and everything on top of the grass over time it compact them and step on and it doesn't get the air and it can't breathe and the space is tight on there especially like what i did i just went through a process of killing the weeds so now that area where the weeds are dead there's no air no growth right there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open that up with that core area and i'll do a video when i when i get one i'm going to rent one and i'm going to aerate the property and you can rent one from home depot uh, you can get it for like four hours a little pricey I would say talk with your neighbors. Uh, I think you get it four hours for like $125. But possibly talk with your neighbors. Y'all pitch in to aerate the lawn together. Pokes a hole in it. Let's it breathe. And I guarantee you, once you aerate, you will see immediate results. Uh, probably within the next two or three weeks, you'll see results. And um, what, what uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to. So I'm trying to give tips on what people normally don't pay attention to. Uh, the one main thing I think people don't pay attention to is the insects in the property so you have grub you have army worms and they are active now from about april to may is the time to kill them you need to put down a um like what i use the product here uh i've done a quick video on it it kills a good amount of bugs i use it around the house indoor and outdoor it's at home depot it's in a different brand now it's in a different cover now but it's an hdx uh brand you can find it at home depot in the insect section good product but you also need something, uh, what's this called, to kill grubs. There are grubs two inches down into your soul. And what you'll have, you'll have dollar spots and just little spots of patches of brown. And those are 
grub. So I'm actually got a property now that I do that uh, armadillos are coming out at night and digging holes in the ground. They're eating the grub. Um, you can't really get rid of armadillos. Uh, get rid of their food source, which is the grubs. And that stuff there won't soak into the soil. So uh, Bay, uh, Bayer Advance um, actually has a good product. It's like uh, 19 bucks. It's called, uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of what it's called, but it's called like a granule killer. Scott's has one too. Uh, Scott's is a preventer because I read some reviews on there. It doesn't actually kill them. It prevents them. The uh, Bayer Advance actually kills them. When you get this product, please, please, please follow the directions. Please follow the directions on this particular product. When you put it out with your seed spreader, you have to put the seed spreader to a specific setting. You can't just go out there and just pour it in there and just do it. You have to water this product in. You have to water it in pretty heavy too. It needs to soak into the soil. It needs to get at least two inches down into that to that soil to get to those grubs to kill them. If you don't put them out now, what happens is they'll they'll be pretty much immune to it and it won't it won't harm them. So it's best to get that product and put it out now. It's on the shelves. It's like 19 bucks. One bag will do you good, probably for this season. I think it says six months. You really want to take care of your lawn, I would get that bag. And if you don't have a large yarn uh, lawn, measure your square footage and put it out maybe every three months uh, to keep them going. If you want to be really, really proactive, you want to go get that Scott's Preventer and put that uh, preventer out. Uh, the next step is to actually go and get you some fertilizer. This is what everybody, uh, you know, runs to the store and gets. You see these Scott's weed and feed and all the other kind of stuff there. The weed and feed is cool, but pay attention to the numbers on it. You want to pay attention to your N, your P, and your K. Your N is nitrogen, your P is phosphate, and your K is potassium. Um, most yards, you know, you'll notice that the nitrogen number is higher. The first number, the N, is always higher because that's what the yard uses up the most. Phos uh, phosphate, or is it phosphorus? Phosphorus, I'm sorry. Um, I think they're kind of banning it or something like that in the USA, saying this, that it's harmful, so you, it's hard to find. You probably can find a liquid form, and the last one is potassium. Uh, that's going to be your, uh, I think that's what helps the, uh, I want to say the color. It helps with a little bit of color and just a nutrient that the, uh, the property needs. But um, starting out, I would just go with a generic 10, 10, 10 starting out. Um, be careful with the weed and feed. It's a product in these and the weed killers and the herbicides that I was telling you is called 2,4-D. 2,4-D kills the broadleaf uh, weeds and all that kind of stuff. And then you have the mesofuron. It kills a lot of the uh, grassy weeds. And then you have uh, quinclorac, which will kill a lot of your crabgrass. But what I'm saying is that if you follow the steps and if you put out a herbicide on your grass and kill the weeds and then you're going to get a weed and feed, that's too much herbicide for your property. It'll actually start harming the Bermuda or the centipede. Bermuda will bounce back. You might have a, a brown spot for about a week or two, but it'll bounce back. Uh, pretty quick it comes back and it, it's, it's it's an aggressive grass to so, I me mean, your centipedes and your zoysias and your fescues might not be so pay attention to what type of grass you have and be careful with these weeding feeds the best thing to do i know people a lot of people don't probably don't want to do it i won't go to that balance is check you do a soil test i think you can get some of the kids from home depot i know you can go to your local university or school nearby i think uga has one clay state might have one you can actually do a soil test and send it out and they will send it back to you and tell you what it is that you actually need. They might say you might need, you might need more uh, nitrogen, you might need more phosphorus, you might need more potassium. That'll give you a better direction of what to actually go and pick up. But starting out, get a 10-10-10. I would get an all-purpose 10-10-10. Follow the directions. Set the seed spreader, whatever seed spreader you have. Um, if you got a Scott's Edge Guard or some of the other different ones out there, it'll tell you on the back of the bag what setting to put it at. Don't just pour it in the bag, set it on seven, and walk around with it. You gotta do it a certain way if you want this stuff to be effective. Water it in. Uh, so you guys get that. Uh, I'm actually gonna put mine on the program, so I'm gonna put out a basic 10, 10, 10. I'm gonna do a test and see what it see what it needs from there, but I'm gonna use a liquid one, and I'll use this liquid one probably about twice a month. It's a micronutrient. Uh, to get real technical, you're only supposed to have so many pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet in your property. I think you're not, not supposed to have more than two pounds of a thousand, per thousand square feet in your property. And when those things say 10, 10, 10, or say 37, uh, that's for the whole yard. So per square foot, per thousand square foot, it's only getting probably a couple of ounces of nitrogen. You might be getting, you know, say, let's say eight or a quarter of a pound or or a sixteenth of a pound. You're not getting enough. So that whole number, don't let the number scare you. Do the calculations on there or, you know, hire a company. We'll, we'll definitely come out there and um, do it for you and get the, the property right. Um, but um, that's, an, uh, that's another one, your fertilizer. And um, the next quick tip, and I, I think a lot of people don't do it, is cut your grass. 
the grass needs to be cut frequently. What happens is, is the grass starts growing up and the grass that's below it is covered by like the shade and all the other weeds on the top. And when you cut, you stimulate growth. Just like with your hair, when you get your hair cut, starts growing like I need mine right now. But when it starts growing, when you, when you cut it, it stimulates it to grow. So it grows, come back healthy and stronger. Mulch the grass. If you don't have weeds, if you don't have weeds, do not bag the, the clippings. If you don't have weeds, if you have weeds, if you can bag them because you don't want to put those weeds back on the grass and start to germinate it, especially if you don't have the pre-emergence. So bag them. Uh, if, if, if you have some, uh, if you, if you have a good, you know, nice lawn, you got rid of the weeds, mulch it. Uh, don't bag them. You want to get your lawn mow with the mulch kit on there. Have your lawn care person make sure he's mulching them. What happens is that it, it all it does is recuts it, recirculate into small pieces, and that grass goes back into the soil. But if that soil, that, that grass that's cut has all kind of nutrients still in them, it has nitrogen in it, it has the phosphorus in it, and it still has the potassium in it. Well, what happens is it goes back into the grass and refeeds the grass. So now you're gonna stimulate it growth and you stimulate even more when you're putting out the when you're putting out, you're almost refertilizing when you're cutting it because the grass nutrients are going back into the grass. So um that's it. That's another um, a, a good tip. So those are just some of the tips I wanted to pass on to you guys uh, that are at home. You know, you, you do the lawn yourself. You're like, hey, I, I want to do this myself. I don't need to hire a company. Just passing on the information. So definitely want to get the pre-emergence. Like I said, you want to get the 007. Let's go. It's a little too late for that now um, because this, the, 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 the uh, how do I say it? The uh, weeds have already germinated and they already took in root. So uh, in this case, you want to go to the store and go get you a, not a selective herbicide. A selective herbicide, you want to get something that's going to handle broadleaf. You want to get something that's going to handle uh, your nuts edge. And you want to get, uh, it's going to handle your um, crabgrass. It's going to handle some of your um, other um, perennial grasses and sages and all that kind of stuff there. Because one isn't going to do it. So when you mix the batcher up, do that. Um, put it out. Uh, then you want to actually uh, check your pH level, which is the lime. Your pH level is probably low. You can actually do a test. I forgot to talk about that. You can do a test real quick. I think Home Depot sells a little test there to tell you. Uh, and don't quote me on how accurate it is. Uh, I don't want to sit here and say that. You got something you can do research on that really, really accurate. You got something that might be less accurate. But you got a gauge. And you got an idea of how much you need to put down on there. Lime is pretty cheap. You need quite a bit of lime to get it to where it needs to be. So it's a process. It's not something where you put out lime one time. And the pH balance of where it is. It might take one or two seasons to get it there. So keep that in mind. This is a process. This is like treating a patient. It's not a one and done thing. It's an ongoing thing, but you guys can do it. And it's not expensive. Home Depot, Lowe's, these big box stores sell a lot of what you need. Um, you want to get rid of those bugs. Um, like I said, get that HDX. Um, it'll kill mosquitoes. It'll get those mosquitoes out of the yard. It'll get those um, all those, I use it for everything. So, so, you know, I don't have any, uh, cause I used to have a lot of spiders around my front porch. So it kills them. Of course, roaches, um, uh, spread in and out. I don't have no problem with that. And then you want to get your grub killer. Uh, Bayer, uh, Bio Advance has that. Um, kill those grubs in the property. They will destroy your lawn. Uh, and the next thing is you want to do, you want to aerate, uh, create some space in that lawn to, um, get it nice and thick and uh or to, to create some air so it can breathe and it can get do you know have room to grow uh next thing you want to do is you want to cut it um cut it frequently if you have really good grass and it's like like well taken care of you need to cut it twice a week um i know some people are, I mean, i'm not getting it twice a week but to keep your yard looking really lush and nice man don't especially bermuda you don't want bermuda to really get over two to two and a half inches tall. It's a short um, grass, it's, it's a nice and it's aggressive grass. It'll grow pretty quick. So, you know, you probably wanna go out there Saturday, cut it and come back out there probably again around Tuesday or Wednesday and cut it again. You wanna keep this thing at two, two and a half uh, inches. Don't bag it if you don't have weeds. Um, if you have weeds, bag them, toss them. Um, talked about putting out your selective herbicide, um, putting out your fertilizer. Try to find, if you can, get your test done. Call a company, um, bag it up yourself, mail it off. Try to get an idea of where your lawn is. Uh, don't just throw anything out there. I know you go in the store and these big box stores will tell you, turf builder, this builder, that builder, and you see these numbers and you don't know what it is. You need to know what your lawn needs so you can feed it correctly. You might be giving it what it doesn't need. And that's why you're not getting the, getting the results that you want to get. Read the directions. People, please read the directions. Apply this stuff properly. 
You do these things. I say you might spend a hundred bucks a year. I mean, a whole year you might spend a hundred bucks and you will have a beautiful lawn. If you follow these steps and if you do what needs to be done, if you feel that you cannot do it and you don't want to, but you want a beautiful lawn, contact your local um, lawn, lawn care provider. You can always contact us, Quality Lawn Care Cares. Um, you can go to our website. Uh, you can book with us. We'll come out there and uh, we actually, um, if, if you just want to talk and get a better understanding, I'll be willing to sit down and explain to people what to do and kind of guide you in the right direction if you just video isn't enough, I'll be willing to do that for some, uh, some of the people who just really want to learn or we'll put the plan together and start a treatment plan for, uh, for your property. Um, so, and uh, yeah, motion and taking care of it. Those are just some of the quick tips. Uh, there's a lot more to it, but I think those will get a lot of people in the right direction and you'll start getting some really, really good results out of your lawn. Like I said, I sprayed this yard. I had, you saw the weeds. I just saw a video of like what it looked like before. If, if you know what I'm saying? I didn't put no herbicide out. It looked like terrible, and I still have a lot, you know, a lot more out there. But, but the Bermuda is actually coming; it's, it's coming through, and it's like I got space. I'm coming, so once I actually start to aerate it and I get rid of those other weeds, we finna have yard of the year over here in uh, my homeowners association. So uh, I hope you guys didn't find this video too long. I hope this um, really helps some people out. Uh, you guys stay safe. Um, you know, do the social distancing. You know, I don't want to get sick out here, but if you're in the house and you can, you know, order these products online from Home Depot, then mail it to your house. And you just around the house and you want to start, you want to get started on this, now's the time to do it. Get out there and uh, get in that yard and um, get this thing looking right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, leave a comment, post, let me know if these tips are working for your property. Send me some pictures, send me some photos. I want to see uh, what's going on with some of these properties out here and if you guys are doing a great job. So I hope this helps out. You guys have a blessed day. Peace.